So, creating a five-year plan. Hmm. As, as, as Chris says, we want everyone to contribute and create something that's owned by everyone in management terms. There are a couple of ways of doing that, though. Um, and this is part of that. Listening to people's ideas, making sure we write them down and share them in the next stage with the community online. But the first way of doing a five-year plan, and I, I've got and a couple of us I know in here are all tanky, is by Comrade Joseph. And his five-year plans you didn't mess with. Um, and he, he perhaps had some success and some failures. The, the other way, perhaps the free-for-all, where, um, and there may be some old anarchists in here as well, we just throw it around and see what comes out. Um, our process, hopefully, will be neither of those, but somewhere beautifully positioned in the middle. The process, so that you know where you are sitting today, is as follows. We'll be thinking about where we are now, and we've been doing some work on that already, which I'll be sharing with you shortly. Today we'll be thinking about where we're going, and how do we get there. So those are probably the two big questions, particularly for people who are readers, but not familiar as, as others with what the charity's been doing, but use the service and can see the bigger vision of this amazing project that works in practice, but obviously would never work in theory of Wikipedia and the other websites. So how do we go about it? First of all, we've done what's called a situational analysis, and um, somebody from outside has interviewed staff and trustees, and I'll share some of those, the messages we're getting from that with you all. And that's almost complete. We have an event today where, with a decent amount of time, we can talk and listen to each other, and particularly those of you who are from outside, who haven't been come involved, dare to be Emperor's New Clothes, tell us if something we're doing is, is silly, why? And share your enthusiasm. And I think you'll be impressed by the enthusiasm that comes from within as well. After that, I will be, we will be reporting a situational report and putting the notes of today's meeting on our website, the Wikipedia UK website, and starting the debate where people will be able to talk about what they read and come up with their own ideas for the discussion. And by early May, I hope we'll have a first draft, aiming at four or five pages, equivalent A4, of where <coughs> we'd like to be going over the next five years. There'll be a second draft coming to our AGM in June, which can be debated and discussed at our AGM in Lincoln, and then a final draft agreed by our board in July. It's quite a fast time to look. The important thing to remember is it's not set in stone and we review it every year, and if you can put in your diary now, I've booked the whole of this floor for February the 15th, 2015. So I don't have to worry about the Green Party, we've got it. So we'll be doing this process again next year, and we'll be learning as well. And can I just bear, in your packs you've got a, a feedback sheet, so we really, really want to know what's worked, what hasn't worked at the end of the day, and so that we can learn from next year. So, what's our mission? That is our mission. Keywords of open knowledge and sharing. And these are in your pack. But what are our objectives? And this is a slide produced by um, our consultant who's been looking at where we are. And some of you may agree or may disagree with this, but he's tried to consolidate what we do into three areas. Accessing free information, <coughs> Improving and extending the Wikipedia projects, and that's Wikipedia itself, and the other sister websites, which you may or may not be as familiar with. And enabling more free content, and that's getting, for instance, a big institution like the National Archive to release some of its, its photos or its documents under an open license so that everyone can use them. And those are important objectives. How do we do that? Just in some practical ways. We uh, train editors, people who not yet press the edit button on Wikipedia, giving them a little bit of support on how to do that, what the rules are, and how they can make Wikipedia better and the other websites. We have partnerships in GLAM, which is the Galleries, Libraries, Archives and Museums <coughs> session, session, 
uh, we and higher education where we have people we're actually paying grants to museums to have Wikipedians or Wikimedians in residence who will encourage the organizations to contribute um, content to the, for the users of those institutions to learn how to edit and to build relationships and that's going really really well and Daria in the Glam workshop will tell you a lot of that in great detail we want more volunteers in a sense, anyone who presses the edit button on a Wikipedia website for the first time is a volunteer. But we need people to come out of their rooms, away from their computers, to help run Wikimeets, to train editors, to take part in the events that we hold. So that's very, very key. Because this is an organisation that's led by its volunteers. The staff are here to empower the volunteers. Um, and as a result, we have things like conferences, wiki meets, which generally involve beer, um, not necessarily. And in 2014, we're hoping that London will be the host of the big international conference called Wikimania that happens annually um, and could have up to 2,000 Wikipedians from all over the world. And finally, um, we have Wikimedia's in residence, <coughs> which I, I've mentioned, they don't have to be in Glam organizations, we're going to probably have one in the organization that coordinates university technology, it's called JISC. Um, so there are lots of opportunities, and in the German chapter are thinking of having all comedian residents in Mercedes-Benz to try and get the archives from Mercedes-Benz and make them freely available. So, next. <coughs> These, I'm going to share some early thoughts with you of what staff and trustees have been saying. Um, first of all, we're, what we ask people what we thought our values and principles were. Transparency and openness, really important. That we try and share what we're doing, the decisions we're making, and why we're making those decisions. That we want to have an open approach to learning and knowledge. That it's not a closed thing. People, we want people to participate and share and that we want to get the information that public bodies have and have that shared with the whole country you may have read that the cabinet office had an initiative which is coming through government that all all scientific papers paid for by us the taxpayer should be published for the public and not just confined to expensive academic um, journals so that would be one example and finally, to recognise the contribution of volunteers is central to whatever we do. So those are values and principles. We want to be respectful and professional and having working relationships with everybody. We want to be fully inclusive in our activities. And we struggle with that a bit. 85% perhaps of our editors are men. That doesn't represent the population. We need to make sure that our activities are informing our websites in a way that reflect the whole population and not just in the developed northern countries but actually in the rest of the world. And finally to promote linguistic and, and linguistic and cultural diversity. And in the UK we have a big, big opportunity. I was speaking to a Gujarati editor yesterday, he's based in London, lives in London, um, and wants to do editing workshops for Gujarati speakers. So that's a way that with the wealth of the UK we can support other communities around the world. So our aim is to provide some more human knowledge to everyone in the world. 2011-13, we, we asked people what our achievements were. Um, that, that is somebody saying they're locked up outside. So, I'm going to give that to you to Harry, and you can give that to somebody and ask it. Hello. And they'll let them. And we're an improvisational organisation that pass mobile phones somewhere between us. <laughs> um, so anyway, we've got an office, we've got a strong staff team of nine people, we have Wikimedia in residence at major institutions, and we're doing big events all the time. We've also grown the sectors we're working with, we're developing new volunteers, and we have a thing called Train the Trainers program, where one of my very, very, very vocal trustees, first time I met him, said, this is the key to everything that you can't expect people who are clever at technology to necessarily be good teachers. We need to train those clever people of technology in how to teach editing. There's a big difference. And we've now got 30 plus people 
who have been on a two-day course on how to impart that knowledge. We're having more wiki meets all over the country. We've got a map upstairs where we're gradually filling in the gaps. Short for euphemism for what we're what we not doing well. People said in this, this survey that we were, we were not getting enough volunteers and we weren't getting the engagement hoped. That there'd been too much turnover on the board. That were too many people coming and going. That we'd not been good enough at measuring the programs that we were doing or planning them sufficiently. And there is a decline in the editor com community. It's perhaps a couple of percent a year, but nevertheless, <coughs> We want to reverse the decline in people who edit Wikipedia. It's not a crisis, but it should be going the other way, particularly with four million pages in the English version to keep an eye on. The context of where we are at the moment, we asked about. Um, I don't need to read these out, but we are in a difficult environment for a lot of people in this country. Our funding is fairly stable, but other people are finding it tough out there. And we need to make sure that we, despite that, encourage them to share their knowledge with us. But we need to make, encourage nervous cultural organisations to see that Wikipedia is not, and Wikimedia projects are not threats to them, that we can enhance the culture of the nation. And there are still people who do not, not so much in this country anymore, but to some extent, have the access to the information and we need to make sure that we work to share that. <coughs> um, the open source community, which consists of quite a few organizations, <coughs> they, they struggle to make their self heard and it's something that perhaps we as a community can support. And there are threats out there. If Wikipedia went black for a day, a year ago, because in America there was a piece of legislation that would have meant that basically anything that linked to a pirate site would mean that the whole website had to come down. And we fought that off. But there have been similar things in the EU and in the UK. There are companies that know that information <coughs> is wealth and power and we need to make sure that they don't try and stop us sharing our information. And there may be other organisations that want to do things better than us, so we need to be aware of that. Internationally, I've mentioned the decrease in editing, but there's always the gender balance, whether we're increasing or decreasing, we need to address. And we need to think geographically about why are so few people editing in certain parts of the world. Fairly obvious answers to that um, in terms of access to the internet and wealth, but can we address that? And accessing Wikipedia through mobile phones <coughs> has been one of the big leaps forward that the Foundation internationally has done. Um, so, a final point on that. We're a chapter. There are growing chapters just this week. Sweden appointed a chief executive. Hungary appointed a chief executive. We're growing as international chapters working in local areas. How can we work closely together and how can we support the Wikimedia movement? Um, final point on this slide is that some people try and Tamper with Wikipedia, particularly. Um, and we've been working with the PR world to come up with guidelines so that people do not edit their own pages, for instance. Or if they are editing, they make sure they follow the rules so that we are a properly reliable set of websites. But it's a, it's a challenge that we've talked about, and people could ask about it. It's quite detailed, but we've done well on that. So for the next few years, the sort of challenges we'll be talking about today is making sure that we're well run, that we continue to have enough support and funding despite the recession, that somebody mentioned particularly the technical committee, that we need to make sure that it's easier to edit. And there'll be a big leap forward this year when instead of when you edit, you see a whole load of funny squiggles and dashes and dots, you <coughs> actually just see the text you want to edit. And we know that's going to be a big leap forward, but there are technical challenges. We're growing as a charity, we've grown very quickly. We need to make sure that growth is sustainable and works. And at the same time, empowering the volunteers to do more and more of the, of the work on the ground. Our appetite 
and ambition is huge. Um, we've come from no staff to nine in about 16, 17 months. But there are still, there's still room to grow. Um, we want many, many more volunteers. We want more activities. We want to have more influence. And when asked, people do have an appetite amongst the trustees and staff for growth. But that's got to be something we do in a sensible way. Otherwise, like a balloon that's overinflated, we could just burst. <coughs> in 2013 to 18, we'll be looking at our priorities today. Um, these are some of the things that people mentioned in the survey. It reiterates a lot of what I've just said. But please think of these things in the back of your mind when you're talking about whether it's a GLAM project, an education project, working with volunteers. Are we hitting some of these buttons? Capacity building. We need to complete the actions from our governance review. It was a choppy year for the board. We were, we were learning lots of new lessons, and we effect, we've had a governance review that's come with 50 suggestions, some of which are no-brainers, some of which we need to think about and debate within the movement. And that will be tricky. Today, perhaps, we don't need to dwell too much on that. Let's look at the, the, the program and what we want to do. But we do need to stop being London-centric, for instance. So it's great that we're all here in a nice building, but for Addy, you had to come from Manchester, and got here first. Well done, Addy. Um, it's, it'd be nice if there were more events like this in Manchester, perhaps. And I'm thinking of my, my fellow countrymen in Wales, and there are people who live in Scotland as well, which we do not serve well. There's the entire rest of England as well. Heard that, yes. So, we need to spread out around the country, and that's something I think with, with volunteer support um, we can do. Now, before I, we, we, I send you off with your chairs to the workshops, um, some background to remember, and this is, I hope, helpful. We are a registered charity, so we have rules we need to follow. We're a company limited by guarantee. We're an association of active members, so we're volunteer-led. And we're a chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation. We're part of an international movement. And so whatever we do, we have to have in the back of our mind our duties, our legal obligations, our raison d'etre of being a volunteer-led organization, and the fact that we're part of an international organization. And to give you some idea of who we are, um, at the moment, well, two days ago, we had 293 members, people who paid five pounds. We have 5,750 people who donate money every month to us through a direct debit. We have around 70,000 people who give some money once a year. There are, we guess, and it's very difficult, the English language Wikipedia can be edited from anywhere in the world, and obviously there are a huge <coughs> amount of people editing from Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand. But we reckon there are around 10,000 people editing Wikipedia and the other websites in the UK. And readers, I think 15 million is probably an underestimate, to be honest. Um, if you see somebody who says they don't use Wikipedia, get the lie tester out, I think. <laughs> so who, who are we on the ground? Who are you sitting around? Well, it's the trustees. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Saad, unfortunately, has gone to San Francisco today, and uh, the rest of us are the rest of you here, which is fantastic. And this is the staff. Um, great debate over the hair style. <laughs> <laughs> like some women members. I had to keep switching them around. Um, I'm probably the only one who looks half like the person. But they're all. Um, so Jonathan is with his wife in Georgia, unfortunately. And Stevie, uh, sorry, Richard Novell, is trying to keep his relationship with his girlfriend going in Leicester. Apart from, and Katie is in Leeds doing something in Leeds, probably digging the snow there, Catherine. Sorry, Catherine, yeah. Uh, the rest of us are here, we've got our badges on, so say hello to us. Okay, the four strategic priorities of the foundation in, in San Francisco, the international ones, just to mention them, to stabilize the infrastructure to make sure the websites work, have more people participating, to improve the quality, to increase the reach, 
and to encourage innovation. And as a chapter, I think largely we, we've agreed with those ideas. And those are, again, background for you to think about when you're coming up with ideas today.